Hey guys, long time no see. It's been a, almost a year since my last YouTube video and a lot has changed since then. So I wanted to sit down and talk about the new chapter of my life as a flight attendant. Um, a lot has happened since last year. Um, so I'm just gonna go over a few updates with you and then I'm really gonna get into the main topic of this video, which is my first month as a brand new flight attendant. But the new updates are that ever since my last video, I've um, turned 30. I lived in California for about a year and a half, 18 months or so, and I also went to South Africa for my birthday trip. I started a new job with my dream company that I have had an eye on for a very long time. Uh, I'm not going to mention anything about the company specifically, just because uh, this video is in no representation, not affiliated with the company. This is just me kind of sharing my personal experiences with you guys and just kind of giving you a little glimpse into um, what it's been like uh, as a flight attendant starting out and as someone who's had no previous experience in the airline industry or as a flight attendant. For as long as I can remember, all I've ever wanted was a job that would allow me to travel the world, travel different places, and get paid for it. Um, basically doing what I like, because for the last couple years, there has been no stability in my life. The only thing that I've been committed to is travel. So this job is definitely a dream come true for me. I, I'm still pinching myself, still trying to kind of take it all in and be grateful. So let's go through the good and then I'll touch base on the bad. Um, I want to give you a really good picture of what it's been like for me at least. Every single time I'm on a trip, I usually am always with a new crew. Um, that means new pilots, new flight attendants. Um, we're all not new, but we're just never, we may have never worked together before. So it allows me to have exposure to different people all the time, which really makes um, the job more interesting as opposed to, you know, constantly going into work with the same people over and over again. So I do love that. I love that everyone comes from different places, um, different ages, you know, men, women, gay, straight, lesbian, um, 21 to 60 and older. I just feel like it's, I don't know of any other job where I'm able to work with that many different people in one place and also to see the passengers who also come from different places and are going different places and are all different ages, races, creeds, and that part of it is probably the best part of the job, um, not to mention all the travel benefits, but the interactions with people um, definitely is one of the reasons why I knew that this job would be for me. Um, the schedule is a good and a bad thing, so I'm not even sure how to get into it because it's really hard for me to explain because I'm still learning myself. So basically, I get my schedule a month ahead of time before um, the month actually comes to work. Um, I'm on call six days, at least six days a month, which means that I could be called to any city, any trip, at any time during the days that I am on call which is kind of exciting, but also kind of scary and annoying at the same time. So that could be a plus or a minus um, in terms of good or bad with the job. But the nice thing about the schedule is that if I want to move things around or if I want to switch a trip or pick up a trip, I could do so. Um, maybe not always what I want, but it is available, um, whatever is available out there. So for instance, Last month, I was just going to fly what was given to me because I really didn't know what I was doing and I still don't know what I'm doing. But on the days that I was off, I picked up some trips, um, just like I went to Alaska and went straight back and then I went to Las Vegas and got paid to be there. So those type of things with the schedule are very nice. And then I was able to drop a trip at the end of the month and have seven days off. So that type of flexibility is something that I highly value because I actually think that I'm getting to the age now where I value my time just as much as I do value my money. Like every single time I look at my bank account, my eyes are just like wanting to look away. It's like I don't need that negativity in my life because during training, we get paid a minimum wage uh, pay, which really sucks. Um, but I saved up quite a few paychecks before I started training and that's what I've been living off of basically. And you know, I hear some airlines don't even pay for training, so I'm not going to complain. It would have been now, now that I'm a month in, I feel like I'm still not getting paid what 
it, what I've flown so far and the way that the company has it set up is like really confusing. I know that it's going to get better so I'm just going to be patient and fly, fly, fly and then wait to see those numbers start to really reflect as the amount of exhaustion that I'm feeling. <laughs> If you want to become a flight attendant, you have to agree to go to wherever they need you to go. Now you can have preferences. So we were given three different base cities, which was New York City, Minneapolis, and Salt Lake City. And I was like, okay, let's look at New York's cost of living and look at Salt Lake. And I don't really want to be in Minneapolis because of the weather. So I picked Salt Lake just as simply because it's the cost of living is cheaper. There's a lot of outdoorsy things to do here. But the first week that I was here was horrific. I did not know where I was gonna live. I was staying in the hotels that the airline provided for us when we first got out of orientation and out of training, but that only lasted for about three days. And then after that, we were just kind of thrown out, kind of like you're on your own. So me being in a new city in Salt Lake uh, that I've never been to, not knowing anybody, not knowing the area, just kind of going off what I was Googling and, you know, hearing from people, it was very frustrating, like having all your stuff with you and not knowing where you're going to live and still having to work um, when you had to work. So I was carrying all my things with me in and out of hotels and I was apartment hunting, and also, you know, looking for rooms to rent, talking to people. That was very stressful. And it's still a little stressful just trying to, you know, acclimate to the new city. But starting out in the airline industry, everything is based on seniority, which means that whoever has been working the longest usually gets better schedules, better pay, better um, benefits. So when they fly, they have priority over the people that just started. So, and then just getting the trips that nobody wants. Um, I thought that I was gonna love flying red eye flights because naturally I'm a night owl. I usually stay up really late, but I was in training for eight weeks and I woke up at 6 a.m. every day to get ready for training on East Coast time and then now I'm back in the West Coast and during the first month of flying I was doing night flights like every single flight I was on was a red-eye flight all the way across the country going from West to East so essentially I was having to work during the hours that I should be sleeping um, and I was able to stay awake but as soon as I sat down and I wasn't moving I felt how tired I was you really don't realize the importance of taking care of yourself until you're flying back to back flights on and you're switching time zones and you're not sleeping on a regular schedule and you're constantly in motion. My body was like, whoa, what is happening? Um, I felt really dehydrated all the time and I felt woozy and lightheaded and dizzy on some of the first flights that I took. And it's my fault because I wasn't drinking enough water. I wasn't eating because it was kind of inconvenient for me to eat. Um, I would eat, you know, whatever snacks were on the plane and stuff, but I wasn't eating any real food, any real, anything that was really giving me like real peer energy to last through a flight. If you get exhausted as a passenger, can you imagine how exhausting it is when we're pushing like 200 pound carts up and down the aisles and having to actually work the flight and then you know, do a red eye overnight. My body has just been like kind of in shock and I've been trying to really um, stay home and make sure I get rest on the days before I have to go into work. Aside from that, little things just like, you know, sometimes you have disgruntled customers or you have um, people that you work with that aren't always so nice, but that's with any job. So I'm not gonna really complain about that too much. I think that the good always, out the good has definitely outweighed the bad and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna face more challenges as I keep as the months go on. But so far, that's all I've been experiencing as a new hire. I haven't flown any international flights yet, unfortunately, because I'm so junior. As every single time I look up or look out the window of the plane, or if I just look down the aisle and look at the passengers when I'm talking to the crew and the pilots, and I look over at who I'm working for, I still am pinching myself because this is something that I have wanted for so long and it took a long time to get here. Um, it was just a very competitive and challenging process and I never thought that 
me standing at 411 and a half, barely reaching what I need to reach to even close the overhead bin and, you know, doing all the things that I've done in the last decade of my life and switching careers, switching cities, switching jobs all the time. I never thought that I would get what I actually have been wanting for so long. Um, these are all the good things and bad things that I have experienced as a brand new flight attendant in the first month of flying. I hope to continue to record some videos and do some new segments and kind of brainstorming what type of things I want to do. I don't think I'm going to do too much about life as a flight attendant, but if you have any questions that you want answered or any curiosities, then feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And I hope that this is helpful to you guys and you enjoyed it in some way. Uh, I just want to give you guys a little tidbit is that believe in yourself and go after what you want because even if you don't get it when you want it, if you work hard and you're persistent, um, it will come to you. So trust the timing of your life because me, after the third try and some of my friends who I've met fourth or fifth try, it doesn't matter how many times it takes for you to get there, but don't give up if you really want something because it will happen. It will happen for you if you work at it and you still continue to strive and pursue it. So anyway, that's all for me for today and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in my next one and hopefully I won't pass out on the plane because I plan to work a lot next few months. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.